Welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're going to watch a film that I discovered is not about a St. Bernard doll going berserk. Not in the slightest. In the 2018 avant-garde film, St. Bernard. To assuage your confusion, latch on to the channel for guidance. Let's get to it. We open on a man in tails, running and cautiously sneaking as he clutches his satchel and catches his breath. He caresses this special package as he thinks back to when life was uncomplicated and pure, when he used to just be a simple ginger maestro genius, hearing symphonies of great beauty in the noises all around him. This cuts to some men crafting with wood and light, and we come to see they're making a conductor's wand of immeasurable power, which Bernard waves to conduct a symphony of insanity inside the patchwork edifice of his mind. These are delusions of grandeur as we see he's mostly being taught the superficial mimesis of a conductor's duties by his very strange Uncle Ed. Ready to receive the success that is his birthright, Bernard goes out to take the world by the tail and finds it full of free, hardcore drugs, the avoidance of which is a delicate balancing act with only one certain conclusion. This leads him along an odd path until he eventually books some gigs. But the audience is baffled and he receives some harsh criticism, which drives him out of the theater to his car. His choices prove fortuitous as he comes across the head of a St. Bernard on the highway, and he stares at it lovingly until he finds a sweet burlap sack for easy handling. Bernard then finds a prosperity preacher who wants his tithe, but he only has his saint, which the holy man desires, as he desires all, driving Bernard out into the city where he's swarmed by pedestrians who peel off his outer layer until he is, once again, naked. He runs through various corridors and hallways and bustling markets, finding himself picking up debris along the way. Soon he's so encumbered by the things that have attached to him that he can't move, and he remains stuck beneath the anus of the Eiffel Tower until a French lumberjack arrives to release him from his splintery prison. When he runs off, he brings us back to the opening scene, so now we know exactly what's going on. He eventually finds himself at the police compound, where everything is controlled by a series of switches, so naturally, he begins climbing. He arrives at the welcome hatch where he requests assistance and is welcomed in. After making his way through the bottles, he takes the audience with the chief. He pays his dues and proclaims he needs help because someone is following him, but he's eventually forgotten by the precinct employees. Free to roam about, he ends up following a wood nymph into an alley outside, which is problematic because she seeks intimacy under threat of violence. As she has deemed herself Lady Roadkill, we find she's enamored with his totem, and she screws him into a stupor, allowing her to abscond with his most precious commodity. But he wakes up quickly, and they have a brief standoff before he gets an assist from some hair skeletons who knock her down and cause her to lose her legs to a legless driver. The driver proves to be unsympathetic to her plight, but that's okay. She is as her children now, so she drags herself away, satisfied with the outcome. Bernard wanders off from here, finding himself in a valley following the sound of a baby, but the stroller he comes upon is empty, save for a mid-sized exploding capsule of blood. The nanny continues on, unperturbed. So Bernard leaves the overpass, heading from there to the firewood shop. Here he finds the keeper of the wood, tending to his log. He asks the most important of existential questions. What did you want to be? before they each make an offering. Unimpressed, the keeper instead gives Bernard some time before sending him along. He gets to the end of the road where he's confronted with a choice. This leads him to a hall of memories we presume only exists in his twisted, confused mind, because his mentor appears unaged. Bernard seeks comfort from the confusion, but Uncle Ed is only able to add to its depth. Ed dances around with Bernard, aggravating him until he smashes the music out of his face. This then escalates into some Tetsuo the Iron Man style action, as Ed then begins a transformation into something beautiful. When he's finished finding his purpose, they square off, and Bernard is thrashed soundly and eventually dumped into the water outside, where he's left to sink into the cold, dark depths of his addled, psychotic mind. <laughs> Reminder that I have a humble website where you can make donations to support the channel. Any donation earns you a link to an uncensored review of Toby Hooper's Life Force. I also have some general horror movie themed merchandise you may enjoy. I've been recognizing people who make generous contributions at the end of my videos, but there's a significant lag time there. So moving forward, I'm going to use a standardized ending. That way I can include everyone at the same time and I can update it quickly on whatever video happens to be next. For now, it will be deemed the Hall of Headshots because that matches up with some footage I already have put together. But but maybe subject to change at a future date. Yeah. 
St. Bernard was an interesting view of a man's tenuous connection to reality. It made me think a bit of clean shaven, but with more of a lean toward horror. In terms of that comparison, it would have been nice to see anything from the real world that would cast some doubts as to what was real or delusional, which may have given some context as to what some of the hallucinations might mean. The director, Gabe Bartalos, did do a great job in keeping the individual pieces connected as we journeyed through. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.